Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and Razer has been doing a good job with its headset microphones of late, especially with the Black Shark lineup. But everybody knows that a standalone microphone, a USB like this one, or XLR, will give you a better capture quality. This is the Siren V3 Chroma, which as you can see, has a pretty phallic shape to it, and some very garish RGB. You can control the RGB through Chroma software, but more importantly, you can also turn it off. <laughs> it's a plug and play microphone, which will just plug straight into your PC and allow you to change things at hardware level. So you can turn the lighting on and off, change it to different settings and easily tap to mute. Where it will go red. It has a 96 kilohertz sample rate, so it does Really good job of capturing some pretty clean and delicious audio. And I'm going to show you how to improve that audio later on. But if you plug it into your PC and use Razer's Synapse software, you can also open up a world of possibilities with virtual channels, which are perfect for streamers and content creators who want loads of different audio channels that you can adjust the volume on and have separate audio tracks for recording in OBS and then editing later on. So it has a number of really nice things about it. As you can see, I've got it on a boom arm now, but I want to show you a number of other things about it which are pretty interesting. There are, however, some downfalls to it, one of which is the hardware level controls, which I find a little bit fiddly. So stick around to find out more about that and how to get it sounding good. The RGB effects won't be for everybody, of course, and some of them are reactive, as you will see. But I do like the fact that it turns red when you mute it, so you've got a good visual indicator of what's going on. Now immediately this makes a logical comparison with the HyperX Quadcast S, which I'll do a separate video on, but you can see it sits a bit lower on the desk than the Quadcast S. However, if you like Razer things, then you're bound to like this, and it actually has some things about it which make it superior to the Quadcast S, including those software level controls that I mentioned earlier on, and as you can see, it also does a pretty good job of not only looking the business but also sounding it too with that 96 kilohertz sample rate and a good capture of quality sound. On the box you'll notice a number of the features pointed out to you including the digital gain limiter. So this has some software level limitations in it where you can basically set it so it won't peak and that will mean that if you're quite vocal in your vocals as in you shout a lot or you get loud then you won't need to worry necessarily about that and also you can see peaking levels within the lighting as well so you can get it to react and let you know when you're talking a bit too loud now it comes with a stand you've seen me put it on a boom arm i'll show you how to do that in a minute as standard it comes on its own desk stand which is fairly solid and will hold on to it nicely although because of the heights that means it's not going to sit very high off the desk you can also angle it on the desk stand so that you can point it towards your mouth which will obviously be beneficial and put it in a direction where it will then pick up the best sound and have easy access to things like the volume wheel and the mute button it's easy to adjust and tweak there and then you can obviously pop it off that stand and put it on the boom arm as well it's important to test and see which works best for you out of this because putting it on the desk next to a Razer keyboard might not be ideal depending on the switches you're using and I will certainly wouldn't recommend this with any microphone really so although you can do it if you've got a particularly noisy keyboard or a noisier environment having it further away from your mouth on a desk stand like this is going to be counterproductive here's a quick clip to show you how much keyboard sound it picks up Doesn't make me safe, but that's a scav. Uh -oh. Ow. So the stand is nice for sure, as is in the built-in shock mount, which should absorb some of that sound and prevent it getting through, but you'll probably want to invest in a good boom arm. The mic itself comes with a decently long enough cable to be able to plug it in and have it on one side of your desk and computer on the other, as you've seen me do in my setup. You'll also notice the 3.5mm jack on the other side which means you can plug your headphones into it, mic monitor, but also pass the sound through the microphone so everything can go through there and you can set it up in Windows in that way. I'll show you that later on. So the touch to mute button on top can be used not only to tap it to mute but also to do other different controls as well. 
press and hold, for example, for a few seconds, and it will switch into a gain level adjustment mode where you can use that volume wheel on the front to adjust the gain. You'll see the colour of the lighting change, with red being the lowest volume and green being the highest, so it goes red, orange, green, it cycles through those colours. And then you can press and hold it again to switch it into headphone level adjustment where it will turn blue, and then you can tweak the level of the headphones if you've got your 3.5mm connection through there. Now the tap to mute functionality on top also has a double tap action where you can double tap to change between the lighting modes, so there's various different hardware level lighting modes, and triple tap to turn it off. What I found though is between muting it and trying to do those other things, it basically it becomes really fussy, it's not very easy, it's not intuitive, and it's a bit of a faff. The tap to mute works quite well, but switching between the other functions at a hardware level is kind of finicky and I'm not a big fan of it. I'd recommend using Synapse instead as an alternative. Now as you can see and as you've seen already it's a pretty compact microphone so it is quite small which again means it's quite far away from you when it's on its desk but it doesn't take up much room so if you've got a small area this is perfect for that. Now getting it off the stand and onto a boom arm is definitely preferable. You saw me using a boom arm at the beginning of this video you just need to remove the bottom of the stand and then it will thread on to a standard boom arm mounting. This is the Rode PSA 1 Plus for demonstration purposes. It will just screw in there with ease. Now it's still attached to the stand, so you can still swivel those bits on the side and then you can tilt and reposition it as you want to. I've got it standing straight up. You don't need to. You can adjust it off to the side. You could have it upside down. It doesn't really matter. You just need to talk into where the logo is. So getting it onto a boom arm and close to you will help you improve the quality of it. So that's one recommendation immediately because that allow you to drop the gain levels down and that helps in itself to eliminate some of that background noise. And obviously it gets it away from the keyboard as well so you're not hearing the clicks as much, so it's worth doing. It's the same with any microphone really, but you can hear the quality difference as well. It's just much nicer when it's closer to you. The super cardioid pickup pattern means it picks up in that one direction. So in theory, it should reject surrounding noise a little bit so you don't have that omnidirectional it's not all the way around the microphone it's just talking into the front of it so you can see if i'm around this side for example it doesn't work as well as it does if you're in the front over here so that's one thing to keep in mind is making sure you're facing the direction there correctly now i want to show you some of the things that you can do to tweak it to make it sound better basic standard ones within synapse and then I'm also going to show you some extra things that you can do and the difference that it makes, as well as showing you the streamer settings that you can do to tweak and get those virtual sound channels as well. So here we are in Razer's Synapse software. A few things, first of all. One of them is you'll notice that this is useful immediately because it has a microphone level meter here. I want to show how you should probably use this in combination with something like OBS's mixer in order to get the right levels for you. I've currently got mine set to 65. You might be able to reduce that even further, but obviously you want to avoid getting into the yellow and red areas because that's where you'll end up peaking and not sounding as good. And if you have it at maximum volume, you'll end up picking up a lot of background noise that you really don't need, especially if you've got it on a boom arm. The other thing is to make sure you've got the sampling rate set to 96 kilohertz. So click into that and that will improve the quality there. One quick thing of note is to do with these volume bars. So you'll see headphone volume, I've got it set to 100, and then listening. So this is the mic monitoring the side tone. So if you've got a 3.5mm headset plugged in, you'll find that you can hear yourself through here. And I've got that set to 100 because I like to be able to hear myself in here. And then obviously we've got the mic gain levels. One of the things that I found is weird is if I adjust through these levels, so let's see I'm trying to adjust the microphone levels in here because I'm peaking too much, I want to bring it down. What I found is that you can't rely on what you can hear through here as side tone to give you an indication of how loud you're actually being recorded. So you have to rely on this visual cue or on your own recordings being played back in order to know that you've got the right volume. You can't rely on what you're hearing through the side tone. So if I turn this right down here, for example, I can still hear myself at the same volume that I can when it's up higher. The other thing you'll notice is even at six gain, the indicator here is still showing that we've got decent levels coming out of it, very comparable, which is kind of weird. So that's very strange. And you'll notice it also changes in the windows as well. You can see that you have various different controls in here for 
the front dial and for the mute button. So you can actually see you can switch between these. You can have headphone volume, for example. So if you've got a 3.5 millimeter headset plugged into the back of the microphone, you're listening through that, then you can use the volume wheel to adjust that and you can change the mic volume, which is the gain using that wheel instead. I'd recommend though, once you've set the gain level to what you want, don't mess around with that. So try and find what works for you and then just leave it as is because you don't want to be turning your mic gain up and down on a regular basis because that will just ruin things. The mute button, as you can see, obviously we've got default is mute microphone. Times two, double tapping it will change the cycle effects as standard, but you can also do other things. So you could set it specifically, go to a specific RGB mode that you wanted. Let's say you want it to go into spectrum cycling. You just tap it twice to do that. You also have three taps to turn the chroma effect on and off. As I said, it's just not very good with this. I find that when I go to double tap, it just mutes it or triple tap. It just mutes it. It's just a bit fiddly. I wouldn't use these. I'd use the hardware controls instead in the lighting section on here. The other thing you'll see is that there's a high pass filter and then there's advanced gain settings as well, which you can turn on and then you get access to the digital gain limiter. This is designed to stop you peaking so you don't end up shouting and ruining your clips and the quality doesn't get reduced if you suddenly become very loud when recording or streaming. And you'll notice obviously that will improve things. So it might be worth playing with these settings and then the auto gain control as an alternative too. There's no noise suppression, no cancellation in here, nothing like that, which is a shame because you do get that some other microphones, not with the Quadcast S, but some of the other more advanced mics will give you control over compressor, DS, or things like that. You don't get anything like that here. In the lighting section, you can also change what the various different colors are. So you can see that the front dial, as I mentioned earlier, you can have the microphone adjustment and the volume levels. So when you change between those, you can then see the RGB change to let you know what sort of level you're on. You can also set a peaking indicator. So as default, it's red. So if you get really loud, you'll find the microphone turns red to let you know that you're peaking. You can also change the brightness of the lighting or turn it off completely. So if it's a bit distracting, which frankly it is at night, you can just turn that off or you can turn the brightness down from here. So you have a lot more controls and sign up, so as you can see immediately. Then you have the various different chroma effects and you can use it along with chroma games as well. So if you've got loads of Razer Synapse things with chroma compatible stuff in there, then you can obviously get it to sync with that as well. And then as default, it mutes to red and you can change that too. Now you'll notice on the left-hand side here that I've got the sound settings. So I have the headphone set to the microphone and the microphone set to the microphone. To access this, if you don't know already, you go down here, right click on your speaker and then click sound settings and then it will pop up here and you'll see those. So it's fairly basic. I've also got my monitor, for example, and my headphones, which I'm obviously not using. Now, what you can do is go into the streamer mixer and turn this on and then you'll notice that Windows will adjust the sound settings and you'll suddenly end up with a lot more virtual channels in here. This includes browsers, sound effects, voice chat, game, music, system, and all sorts of other things included in this mix, which then allows you to customize that for OBS and other things. You can turn it off if you don't want to use it, but if you are a streamer or a content creator and you want it, then this can be helpful. So with it turned on, we have all these different virtual channels in Windows sound settings, and you'll notice that in the stream mix section, there are uh, several different things. So you have the stream mix, which is essentially one mix of all the audio mixed into one. So that means everything that we're about to include will go into a single mix that you can then use in OBS or Streamlabs, and I'll show you that in a second. You then have a playback mix, which is what you hear in your headphones, and you can choose the headphones here, so it's worth noting that, because you can select, for example, I've currently got it set to headphones through a 3.5mm connection, but alternatively, you might want to go through another headset. I've got the Nova Pro Wireless here, for example, we connected up, you could use that, but there does a put some latency in it. And you will notice that you've got different volumes for this as well. So you've got the stream mix volume, playback volume. For the microphone, you'll also see the same thing. So you can adjust what level your microphone is set to and then what the stream hears and what you'll hear in between those. And then you can go in and add a new input. So you might choose, for example, to add music in here. And then you may well have different levels for this you might have music either set 
to the same level for you as the stream or you might want to listen to music yourself but not have the stream hear it so you can completely mute it and turn it off for the stream so you can turn it all the way down or you might want to do it the other way around you might want to have a little bit of music playing with the stream but you don't want to hear it so you can customize that so you can mute the music for yourself and then for the stream now in order to get this to work you need to use spotify as an example so we we'll use spotify open that up and then go into the windows sound settings and then what you want to do is go into the volume mix in here find spotify music select the outputs and let's set that to the music as your output device and what that will do is then that means when you're playing music you can see that when we go to play it it will then play back through here and you can see there's a volume in here which is now 19 for the stream mix but muted for me so i can unmute that and i'll be able to hear it and you'll be able to adjust it and other things if you don't first put it into that app mix then it won't work and it won't appear in there if we go into Streamlabs as a demo it'll work the same for obs click on the cog icon go to the audio section then go to mic and then you'll see that you have various different mics that you can choose from what we're going to do is go for the stream mix down here and then click done. Now at a basic level, this is everything mixed down into one. So there's your game sounds, your mic sounds, chat, music, and other thing mixed into those. But obviously you have to decide what's going to be included. At the moment, it's just my microphone, but then when I press play on here, now it's got music in it as well, and you can see that. You can see that's appearing in there. And then obviously we want to put a game into that mix as well. So we'll launch Escape from Tarkov for a demo. Now with the game launched, if we go back to the Windows apps, you'll see here, we can select the output device, we can set that to game, and then it'll appear in here. So you'll then have game audio appearing in there when the game's full screen. So when you're recording, it'll appear in there. Now the other thing that you can do is you can go into the sound settings in here. We can go into audio. We could set a desktop sound setting of game. And then what you'll see is now we have the game sounds in there. We go in here, we need to make sure that we've set game as one of the sound sources. Just reduce it down for now so it doesn't interfere with the video. But you can see we've got game sound for our headphones and for the stream set to a certain level. And then what you'll see is it's now appearing in both of these. So now you can see we've got audio for both appearing in the game and the thing. Now the reason I've done this is actually what you might want to do is put in some other ones. So you might want, for example, to have a separate one, which is voice chat. So that might be your Discord sounds. So when you open up Discord, go into a sound channel, click on the cog, voice and video. Then you can select your set up so we can have the microphone and then we're going to have voice chat as the output now that's set to voice chat then in here you'll find that you have voice chat settings so you've got a separate track for your game audio separate track for all the mix and then separate track for voice track and then you can click on the cog here and then you can separate the audio out so your stream track will be stream mix but then what you might do is you might want game audio in a separate one and chat audio in a third one. And then what you can do is go into your recording section and set it so you've got four different tracks recording in there. So you've got four different audio tracks and then you might want to set it up so you've got multiple different audio tracks which will appear as different audio tracks that you can then use in OBS for recording purposes so you can customize what audio you're using. This is great if you're streaming with your friends, you're chatting to your audience, you're doing other things, there's a lot of chat and banter going on, but then you realize you want to make a gameplay tips and tricks video, for example, and you just want clean game sounds, you can do that because you don't have that as a separate audio track thanks to this stream setup. So there's plenty of different things that you can do in there as a demo. So we just quickly record, and then I'll be able to show you what I mean by this, because then we've got this background audio in here and then we can just set it up and do that so just quickly show you so now you can see when i drag this in to resolve we've got two tracks and you can adjust those one is the stream mix with everything included and one's 
just the game audio. So that's how you end up with multiple virtual tracks. You can control the levels and you can record them separately as well. So hopefully this has been some interesting insights into the Razer Siren V3 Chroma. As I've shown, you can use it on your desk, but it's definitely better on a boom arm. You do get better sound there. I'll leave information in the description so you can find out more. But generally speaking, I found this to be a pretty good microphone. It does a reasonable job of capturing decent audio and eliminating background noise as long as you get it away from your keyboard and play around with the settings. And as you can see, you can open up a lot more possibilities with Razer's Synapse software. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought. Be sure to check out the description to find out more and stick around to see what this keyboard is all about. Thanks very much for watching.